Participation in science, technology, engineering and mathematics is a major priority for government, industry and the science education community worldwide. There's widespread concern that science participation needs to be increased and diversified, not only for economic competitiveness, but also to ensure social mobility and social justice. My name's Louise Archer. I work at the UCL Institute of Education and lead the Aspires project, which explores the changing influences on students' science and career aspirations. Through two studies, our team is tracking a group of young people from age 10 to 19, surveying over 40,000 students and conducting over 650 in-depth interviews. Our surveys show that while the majority of young people find school science interesting, only a small percentage aspire to a science career. We found that the popular notion of science only being for the clever and brainy prevents people from participating in science. At the moment there are many students who don't have access to uh, the high quality physics education that they're entitled to or they're steered away from it. So particularly girls, we know that uh, just 20% of A-level students are, are girls, they're being navigated in different directions uh, and also children from lower socioeconomic groups. Our research has highlighted the role of systemic and structural inequalities in preventing fair and equal participation in science. Professor uh, Archer's Aspire research has been really, really helpful um, and played quite an important role, particularly in, um, in our evidence gathering sessions. So um, her, her research highlights how the educational system and practices play a role in sustaining and perpetrating inequalities in STEM participants and that's kind of quite a key part of what we are uh, looking at. So Professor Archer's work has been really um, important in providing a solid, well, you know, well-researched evidence for, for, for some of the conclusions that we're coming to. We developed the concept of science capital to capture all the science-related resources or capital that a person might have. This includes scientific literacy and knowledge, science attitudes and how they think about science, what sorts of science-related activities people do in their free time, and who they have as social contacts. We found that the more science capital a young person has, the more likely they are to continue with science after age 16. This work formed the basis of the science capital teaching approach, which has shifted the mindset around science engagement. Our findings have changed classroom practice and have influenced how policymakers and practitioners deliver science education across primary, secondary and the informal science education sector in over 20 countries. The Aspires research is challenging us as a sector to really look carefully at the effects we're having on young people and to not use our assumptions as a basis for action, but to look at what the data is telling us about the influences on young people's aspirations. And in that respect, the Aspires research is having a massive impact on improving the quality and the distribution of STEM enrichment activity across the UK. Science Capital has been integrated into professional training and new practice networks. It's been added as a criterion within national award schemes, including the Primary Science Quality Mark, which reaches 240,000 children and 9,000 teachers annually. Our work has informed the strategic plans of numerous organisations, nationally and internationally, shaping how they think about and engage with underserved communities.